C. Wright Mills, in his seminal work, The Power Elite, offers a penetrating analysis of the social structure in the United States, unveiling the existence of a ruling class that wields disproportionate power and influence. Published in 1956, Mills' exploration remains relevant, providing a lens through which to understand the dynamics of power in contemporary society. Mills introduces the concept of the power elite, a triumvirate comprising political, economic, and military elites who collectively shape the destiny of the nation. These three interlocking spheres, according to Mills, are not isolated entities but rather operate in tandem, reinforcing each other's authority. This synthesis of power, he argues, transcends the ostensible democratic ideals of American society, creating a concentrated force that molds major decisions and policies. The political elite, as identified by Mills, encompasses high-ranking officials in government, bureaucracy, and political parties. Contrary to democratic principles, Mills contends that these individuals are not mere representatives of the people but instead constitute a self-perpetuating elite with its own interests. This detachment from the general populace is accentuated by the emergence of a power elite circle, an interconnected network of influential figures whose decisions resonate throughout the corridors of power. Economic elites, the second component of Mill's power elite, are drawn from the top echelons of corporate America. Mills argues that the concentration of economic power in the hands of a few major corporations fosters a nexus of influence that extends into the political and military realms. The intersection of economic and political interests is evident, as corporate leaders often find themselves in positions of policy-making authority, blurring the lines between business and government. The third facet of the power elite is the military establishment. Mills contends that the post-World War II era saw an unprecedented alliance between the military and economic elites, fueled by the growing importance of the defense industry. This confluence of interests, he argues, has led to a militarization of the economy, with military considerations shaping not only foreign policy but also domestic priorities. The military, Mills suggests, has become a powerful actor in the power elite triad, exerting significant influence over national decisions. Mills further explores the consequences of the power elite's dominance on the democratic fabric of society. He introduces the concept of the mass society, wherein the general populace is relegated to a passive role, devoid of genuine political influence. The power elite's ability to manipulate public opinion through mass media and other means, according to Mills, results in a citizenry largely unaware of the forces shaping their lives. This alienation, he argues, undermines the foundational principles of democracy, rendering it more symbolic than substantive. Despite the seemingly bleak picture painted by Mills, he does not entirely dismiss the potential for change. He envisions the emergence of a public capable of challenging the power elite and reinvigorating democratic ideals. However, he acknowledges the formidable obstacles to such a transformation, emphasizing the need for a conscious effort to break the cycle of elite dominance. The power elite stands as a critique of the prevailing social order, challenging conventional notions of democracy and highlighting the pervasive influence of a select few. Mill's analysis remains influential, prompting continued discussions about the nature of power and its impact on societal structures. While some critics argue that his focus on elites oversimplifies the complexities of power dynamics, Mill's work undeniably offers a compelling framework for understanding the intricate interplay between politics, economics, and the military in shaping the destiny of nations.